Welcome back to free engineering tutorial on operating system. So in previous video, we had discussed about different page replacement algorithms. Now in this video, we will discuss allocation of frames. So the first question arises is that why do we need allocation of frames? So the simple answer is to deploy demand paging. De uh, demand paging simply means requesting of pages according to our needs at that instant of time. Okay. So our allocation of frames is related with some constraint okay so we will discuss these constraint in this slide so first constraint which is most obvious is that we cannot allocate more than total number of available frames okay so let's say there is one vessel which is having capacity of 3 liter okay so it is obvious that we cannot fill water greater than 3 liter okay up to 3 liter we can fill in this uh, volume but greater than 3 liter we cannot fill okay so this is the first constraint after that we must allocate at least minimum number of frames okay so what this constraint is saying is that we must not waste our memory okay at least there should be number minimum number of frames which should be stored at a particular location okay so this is directly or entirely based on the performance reasons okay after that when a page fault occurs before an executing instruction is computed the instruction must be restarted okay so let's say a process is executing okay and uh, it uh, encounters a page miss okay so it will trap it will make a trap and full operating system will complete one cycle of page fault which we had discussed in previous videos after that when page fault handling is done by the operating system the process needs to be restarted okay so this process needs to be restarted is the third constraint okay it will take much uh, amount of time okay after that also we must have enough number of frames to hold okay so to uh, this is one of the most obvious reasons is that or constraint is that we must have at least some number of frames which can hold and uh, uh, relate the uh, continuous flow of execution of process okay so this is the fourth constraint so in this way all the constraints are being discussed here so there are allocation algorithms so first one is equal allocation the other one being proportional allocation okay so firstly we will discuss equal allocation so let's say there is 93 frames okay and we have five process okay so in equal allocation these frames are equally distributed distributed among all the process so each process will get here 18 frames okay and three frames will be uh, left off and it will be called free frame buffer pool okay so these three pages which uh, which are remaining after the allocation to the process they will go to the free frame buffer pool okay so this comprises of equal allocation but the second one is proportional allocation so proportional allocation entirely depend on the size of the process okay in equal allocation the size of frame or sorry uh, size of process is not being discussed okay but in proportional allocation the size of process will matter okay so in what way it will matter is that firstly it will check the size of the pro, uh, process okay and it will add all the process sizes and it will be stored in capital s okay so sigma of si means sizes of all the process are stored in s after that m will be the total number of frames okay so m being the total number of frames in here in this case we are having 64 frames okay and uh, let's say the uh, there are two process one is having the size of 10 and the other one is having 127 okay so the total size of all the process will be 137 okay so this is 137 now proportional to the size of any process we will get the number of frames okay so first process is the size of 10 okay so it will the numerator will be 10 and it will be multiplied to 64 and we will get 5 frames okay so as there are only two processes we can uh, get to know that if there are total number of 64 frames and first one is being allocated by 5 frames 
the it is obvious that the second one will get 59 frames and as dependent on the size of the process as you can see here the second process is big in the bigger in size that's why it is getting more number of frames so this is known as proportional allocation after that there is one other classification which is known as global versus local allocation so here if we are having one page replacement okay and we are having two processes let's say there are two processes which are being executing at any instant of time this is one and this is two okay and now it needs any other page or any other frame needs to be allocated in this memory so there is a constraint that whether he will replace means this process 2 will replace the frames which are there in its own domain or whether it can access the other process domain also okay so what will happen is that in global replacement algorithm or allocation the second process can also replace the frame of process 1 okay so it can replace the frames from here also okay it can uh, replace from here also and here also so this is known as global replacement but in local replacement the process which is being requested or sorry the process which is requesting the frame and the uh, frame which is coming can replace only the frames which are there in the requesting processes domain here in this case this is the domain of process 2 okay so it will replace the incoming frame will replace the frame from only this domain okay so this is known as local replacement now there is one other classification which is known as memory access so there is uniform memory access and the other one is non-uniform memory access so uniform memory access means all the process will share one memory okay so this is known as uniform memory access okay so it it will work just like cache okay so if we uh, have to means uh, replace any uh, any frame then we will replace from this entire memory access okay memory block so just read the definition here all cpus are connected to single memory okay so that's why uniform memory okay and they all can access the same memory so let's say there is one cpu there is other cpu and there is like n cpu okay so these all can access one uniform memory so this is known as uniform memory access okay so here we have to keep account that if c1 is changing any memory then it should be reflected to c2 at the next instant of time so they, here we will have to make consider uh, means consider the concept of cache coherency okay but in other way round in non uniform memory access what we have to do is that we will give each cpu its own memory okay and it will access its own memory only so here you can see that c1 will have its own memory and c2 will also have its own memory and in same way cn will also have its own memory memory n okay and these all are connected to one bus memory access bus okay so here we uh, as you can see that there is no need of implementing cache coherency concept as the, uh, it was in uniform memory access so in this way this classification of frame allocation is being done after that there is a concept of thrashing okay so thrashing simply is a graph between degree of program multi programming and cpu utilization okay so as you can see that we can increase the cpu utilization with the help of increasing the degree of multi programming okay but after a certain extent it will decrease so as you can see that from here if we increase the degree of multi programming thrashing will occur so what thrashing means is that as we increase the degree of multi programming we will decrease the utilization of cpu or the cpu utilization will get decreased okay so if uh, as in the ideal case 
if we increase the degree of multi programming means at a certain instant of time there should be many processes which are running under in cpu okay but it is not the case in thrashing after a certain limit let's say in this graph this is the limit after a certain limit if we'll increase the degree of prog multi programming the cpu utilization will starting to decrease and in the exponential manner the cpu utilization will go slow okay so as degree of multi programming increasing to a maximum limit slowly if multi degree of multi programming is increased even further thrashing sets in so this is the thrashing reason okay so the region where cpu utilization it is decreasing no matter what is the degree of multi programming means if it is increasing then it will be decreasing okay so in this manner thrashing is being explained okay so in next video we will discuss file system and if you want these slides which i am covering in this video you can go to last video of this module and from the link description you will get the idea from where you can get the slides okay so till then thank you